Welcome back guys, Silver Social. So I was talking with an old friend not too long ago and I was trying to convince him to come out and game with me. But I was very surprised to learn that he unfortunately has gotten some very negative impressions of this game and for that reason he's chosen to just omit it from his life. He doesn't want to practice it anymore. And as best as I could I tried to convince him otherwise, you know, his, his impressions were false and that he, you know, should be playing the game in a different way, his own way. So, you know, I, I failed in that um, end of her and he, you know, ultimately decided not to go out with me. But, um, you know, th this video is about addressing that. I want to clear up any misconceptions about what this game is. I'm going to tell you what the game is, the way that it is, the, what it's not, the way that we're going to play, the way we're not going to play. And then finally, I'm going to convince you why you need, absolutely need, to be playing it. So let's get into it. Put it simply, this game is about win-win. If you're not familiar with the game at all, I would say the very baseline skill that you have to develop in order to even play the game is cold approaching. Cold approaching meaning, you know, just like cold calling where you're sort of, you're calling a stranger and you got to kind of warm the, the, the back and forth the conversation up a little bit in order for the, to get them to trust you enough to potentially buy something from you. And, you know, similar to that, although you're not really selling yourself, similar to that where you have to kind of establish trust and then you have to offer them something and they can either accept or reject it. With cold approaching, you know, very similar where you're, you're, you, you, the person doesn't know you and you respect that fact and then you sort of warm the interaction up in such a way that you can move it to some favorable, um, you know, favorable exchange between the two of you and it's win-win. I really want to emphasize that because that is how the game is supposed to be played. Of course, there are people that taint the game and that it's in a very, very unfortunate, you know, it's a very unfortunate uh, phenomenon, or whatever, um, that, that that does happen. It does happen, but, you know, you and I, my friend, we are aware it does happen, but we're also aware that that's not who we are, right? It's not who you want to be, it's not who I want to be, and it, therefore it's not who we're going to be. It's not how we're going to play. And so, um, elaborating a little bit further, guys who play this for the right reasons, they're looking for several different things and you know we all have different goals and stuff, that's a point for later down the road, but guys who play this for the right reasons are looking to develop confidence, improve their social skills, um, they're looking to share love and good vibes and, and get better at that, like actually practice and, and you know know how to very easily, very naturally and effortlessly make people laugh and, and, and improve their days, you know, sprinkle a little bit of color into most people's, you know, boring, colorless, everyday fucking lives and do that everywhere <laughs> and at every, at, any, at every time, anytime, you know, like at the airport, on the subway, uh, on your way to school, in walking between classes, like whatever. And then, of course, you can also practice it like going out to the clubs or whatever, but we, we play this game looking to improve the lives of others, not, which I'm, which I'm going to get into further in the next section, but I just want to make it quick, make the quick point here, not to extract some sort of value from them. We're not taking anything, we're not tricking them, we're not manipulating or deceiving people, and then, yeah, so I, <laughs> it's like all the points of the next section, but anyway, uh, looking to share that love and that good, those good vibes. Um, of course, you know, I, I know, just like me, I, you're probably interested in meeting women, making friends, and getting better at meeting women and making friends and doing that on the spot, in fucking person, face to fucking face, not like, you know, being reliant on some app like Tinder, or I don't even know what the other apps are, like, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're like a little bit more serious about online dating, then probably like eHarmony, or, um, well, there's other ones like, like Christian Mingle <laughs> and all those things. Yeah, so I'm not shaming those things. If you do that, that's, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I personally do have my, my sort of like reasons for avoiding them, but I won't, I won't go into those. I'm just saying that you're not, you shouldn't be dependent on them. You know, just like alcohol. You know, you don't, you don't, I'm not like, this, cha this channel is not about like, fuck you if you drink and ha ha we can do what you're doing without the alcohol it's just like you know hey you drink that's cool but if you're a member of my community here at sober social 
you understand even if you do drink you do it by fucking choice you do it because you want to enhance the fun or you want to I don't know lubricate it a little bit make it a little bit faster or easier or whatever and that's totally fine but you know damn fucking well in your heart that you don't need that shit in order to go out and, and have a good time and socialize with other people and you know cold approach and develop confidence improve your social skills and all this stuff okay you're not dependent on it just like you're not dependent on a dating site you know so again it's totally cool just that dependence that's what we're trying to avoid sorry guys <laughs> So yeah, uh, last, last little point here before moving on to the, point, the section that I really already gave away. Um, a lot of guys, they do use this game and they, they kind of play it in such a way that they're making it about getting laid. And I have no problem with that at all. I, I really want to make that very clear. Especially like if you're one of those guys that is interested in getting laid, that's totally cool, man. Use what I teach you and you, know, you master what I teach you. It is a very, very, very small step to then you know, adding just a little bit of like strategy, a little bit of logistical puzzle piecing together, and then boom, you know, you get laid on a regular basis. That's totally cool, but it's really not my priority. It's not my focus, at, at both on a personal level, like what I'm, what I'm working on socially, nor what I'm aiming to teach you. I just want to give you that baseline confidence knowing that you can go out into a, a situation that's very chaotic and dynamic and have this like peace and, and centeredness permanently that you can then, you know, kind of bring other people into and, and show, like, you can be that inclusive, fun, funny guy that everybody just fucking gravitates to, you know? That's what I want to give you. And then, it, again, you know, you, you take that and you get laid with it. That's totally cool, man. It's just not my priority. I'm, but I'm not going to shame it either in me if I end up, you know, having sex with some girl I have some sort of intimate connection with, nor in you. If, you, if you're, that's your number one priority is what you want, it's totally fine but okay let's let's <laughs> let's move on now to what the game is not again to put it simply this game is not about win lose right like my my poor friend you know he had this misconception that like the game which he you know when his in his eyes the first of all the first distinction is in his mind game means pick up like he always you know that's that's the only place that he's ever heard of like game and approaching random people and socializing and all that stuff but then in addition he also had this terrible just ter like terribly tragic misconception that it's about taking and, and win lose you know manipulating the girl into you know giving him something taking something from her and deceiving her into believing that he's something that he's really not and you know you go about that in a bunch of different ways you might trick her you might like you have it in your mind that you want to take um and then also he also mentioned he told me he, he believes it's you know there's another sort of component of this game in, in his eyes where you you dress a certain way and you may you might like maybe wear certain things you wear certain jewelry you, you speak in some like vocal tonality that is not really who you are and how you're feeling but it's it's all designed it's all been arranged to pretend that you're something that you're really not all in the hopes that the girl will believe that you're of sex worthiness or, or whatever else and that is just it's just a terrible misconception um it's it's all win-lose you know but again put simply it's all win-lose and I've already explained the whole side where, you know, my friend, unfortunately, he kind of got that first impression of the game. And before diving deep enough to sort of open his mind into an, another interpretation of all of it, he just walked away. There's also the other side where these, these guys, they see or they, you know, they believe, they get the impression that this is what the game is about, right? Manipulation, deception, all these like dirty tactics. And they're okay with being that being it and then they go ahead and play it that way and they're actually looking to manipulate and deceive and stuff like that their whole game is you know they still cold approach which is the, the very very good thing right it's just like the baseline skill that we talked about in the last section but they use that cold approaching um and like they do that but then they they add the wrong things they play the game for the wrong reasons and like i kind of already mentioned they're about manipulation and deception they're trying to like ping certain insecurities in the girl in order to get certain reactions from her or the guy you know but again this this is more so like the game side the more pickup side they're trying to do it in such a way where they trick the girl or the guy they they take something from them um and then also kind of like what i mentioned with the clothing and the jewelry and all this shit 
they're, they're playing a role. They're pretending to be something that they're really not. And they're all, again, all in the hopes of getting some positive reaction from the guy or from the girl. In particular, you know, a, a lot of what these guys are about is tricking the girl into believing that he's of sex worth. And then, you know, she, he takes the sex from her. And it's just, it's very dirty, you know, very, very dirty. And that, it's just not the game that we play, you know. We, we now know, you and I, my friend, that is not the game that we play. It's not the, the way that we play the game. Other guys, of course, they taint it, but that is not what we do. We understand it differently, and we're going to make it our own game. So let's just finish up now with the last section before wrapping up with the, with the summary. Let's do it. All right, so we all have different goals, right? Some of us are in relationships, others are not. And we all have different views on, like, sex and premarital sex and what girls ought to be doing, how they should be behaving. Um, none of that really matters. What I'm going to say here is that every single one of us, you and I, my friend, we both stand to benefit from playing this game. Okay, and here's why. When you really commit to playing this game and doing it in the right way, right, when you're, you're, not, you're not allowed to take something, you're not manipulating and you're not shaming other people for the way that they choose to play the game or, or you know, maybe they're not even like consciously playing the game but they're just sort of like a part of it and they don't even know. Not, no shame, no negativity outwardly, just love and good vibes and inclusiveness and all that stuff. Playing in the right way Here's what you're going to be able to get, or what you're going to inevitably get. <laughs> First of all, you're going to dramatically improve your confidence, and pretty quickly as well. I mean, just, just like, like going out alone for the first time. I remember going out alone for the first time. I didn't do very well as far as like surface level results, right? Like actually getting a number or even like approaching very many people and having awesome interactions or anything like that. But just the fact that I was able to get my ass up and to my car and drive to the bar that I'd never been to, right? Because I don't drink and I, it's always been like not part of my identity. I went inside the bar and stayed for like a, a couple of hours or whatever. And I made a single approach. I remember the very first approach and it was freaky and it didn't go well. I was super fucking nervous and it was just like terrible. But I walked out of there and guess how I felt? I felt powerful. I felt so empowered and just free and in control of myself and my behavior and my future because I knew like yes, you know, it didn't all it didn't like go fantastic, but I knew it was just the first step to something so much larger. And of course it has been. Now I'm I'm so much further than that now, but in addition I'm also still on this path getting better every single day, whether it be by actually going out or studying this stuff or teaching you guys, right? Because by teaching it you you have you force yourself to ask those questions to understand it even deeper. I I kind of gotten a little off track but yes you will dramatically increase your confidence and it is not just your social confidence it is a core confidence basically what it translates to the best way I could describe it to you is that you know how in the beginning of this game I mean if you haven't taken the first steps maybe you haven't really tasted this but in the beginning what you're gonna really experience is these waves that are just so dramatic you know these waves of incredible elation and incredible disappointment you're going to feel pleasure and pain and it's going to be so magnificent and then it's going to be so painful and those are all of those things that you might expect in the social arena like getting rejected and just hurts so bad or she says something really fucked up to you and it just kills you inside and then of course on the other hand you get some sort of like you know super positive reaction the girl is like all over you um, and you know maybe people are like coming up to you and asking for your attention asking for your like asking for I don't know like advice or something like that whatever happens and it feels incredible all of that becomes less and less and less intense and what you uncover is this this core sense this core feeling this knowledge I suppose of something that is unchanging and and so much deeper than all of that and really what it means, like this, this core confidence that I'm, I'm t sharing with you, that I want, I want to make you anticipate in a hopeful way. You know that you are a person worthy of respect and worthy of love, period. And when you, you, know, you get rejected, it's not nearly as big of a deal. But on the other hand, of course, the elation it's, it's not going to feel as elating, but of course you still enjoy it, right? Just like the rejection is like, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm like getting <laughs> some sort of like, 
sick pleasure out of getting rejected, although I do make it fun, I, I, I kind of use it as an amusing thing, but the point I'm trying to make is that these waves of dramatic elation and dramatic disappointment will become less and less and less, and you'll uncover something so much greater, so much deeper and, and more core to your sense of worth, your sense of identity as a worthy individual, a worthy human being of love, respect, growth, and all these other things that you and I as human beings are in need of. And that I just, <laughs> I could talk for so much longer, but let's move on. And the next thing that I want to say, you're going to absolutely destroy your outcome dependence. This kind of goes along with that whole waves of pleasure and pain thing. Before, you're very in need of the good and you're very like afraid of the bad, right? And so you're maybe, maybe you're stifled out of action like I have been on tons of occasion. Um, or, or, you know, it, uh, maybe it like goes well and then you kind of get expectations of it going well. And then when it kind of goes not so well, you're like much more, much more invested. And you kind of go harder and you're like, ah, you got to make it work, right? This, as you kind of play that game and you go through those trials and errors, you're going to remove that dependence on how it actually goes for yourself. And instead, you're just going to love the process. You're literally going to like fall more and more deeply in love with this present moment. This moment, the one that is, you know, you're listening to me right now. This moment right in front of you is the same moment that is going to be in front of you when you're talking to the beautiful girl two weeks from now or, you know, three weeks from now or last weekend or whatever it was. It is the one moment and you just fall more and more deeply into present moment awareness in love with it and you don't care so much about how it goes because you know that good, bad, ugly, it's all perfect. <laughs> it's all perfect, you know. You don't care so much about how it turns out because you have faith in the larger picture, this journey that you're on. Another thing that I'll say here, um, again, sort of going along with the whole pleasure and pain and the outcome dependence, you're going to learn very, like, I learned very quickly because I, I, I am sort of like a naturally humorous guy. I, I won't deny that. I, I credit a lot of that to my father. He, he taught me a lot of like my sarcasm and you know, it, it, it was kind of easy for me to kind of pick that up and realize that was a very attractive trait. And so it was, um, it was very quickly that I sort of like adopted that into my social arena. But a quick distinction, if it is one that you need to make yourself, that you will make is um, doing it like for the right reasons, right? So you don't, it's, it's kind of tricky because like you could say the exact same joke, right? I could say the one joke and then another guy says the same joke, but maybe the girl laughs at my joke and, the, and they don't laugh at the other one or the other guy. And the reason that is, is because it's not just whatever you say. It, it's literally not even what you say. Like you could not be that funny. I, I remember actually when I was shooting yesterday, um, I, this girl and her father came by and literally this is what I said, okay? This is, this is the fucking thing I said. I promise you, it's not fucking funny. I said, uh, well, I like greeted them first of all. Um, and then they like asked what I was doing or whatever. And I said, yeah, just taking a break, drink some water. That's what I fucking said. It's not funny, right? But of course the girl, because I just like felt like it was, it was funny to me, she could not help but to give a little chuckle. It was amazing, dude. It was amazing. And so I just, I, I hope that you're, you understand the point that I'm making here there with the whole humor thing. And that's just one example of creating your own joy. Humor is an excellent, excellent way to do that. Um, but just, you know, creating and, and upholding your own good mood in the, in the space of all of that adversity and chaos and just all this like dynamic shit going on. And you're still grounded in this good mood it doesn't matter what you fucking say. If you feel it in yourself and you find it funny, you find it cool, they, you are essentially commanding that they find it the same. It's amazing, my friend. I really, <laughs> I'm just, I'm excited that I, <laughs> I'm excited to continue to, you know, share that with you because it is, when you taste it, it is the sweetest cake that you can ever taste. Um, I guess I already kind of mentioned this. Like I said, you know, the whole, like the whole environment that you're going to be in, it's very dynamic. It's all so chaotic. And you're going to be forced to learn how to stay grounded and centered, cool, calm, and collected 
in those incredibly chaotic situations. And the way that you do it, I, I already mentioned already, you fall in love more and more deeply. You can't expect it all at once, right? I mean, this takes time and you can't beat yourself up. You gotta really just like celebrate those small little wins because as, if you do that, you're gonna you know, train your brain to focus on those and reaffirm and then it just gets easier and easier and easier and they get better and better and better. But over time, you're gonna get, you're gonna fall more and more deeply in love with this moment. And that way, it's, it's like the whole world just slows down. And when you're talking to a woman or you're talking to some other person, talking to anybody, you know, it is literally just you, them, and that, this moment, this, this fucking moment that you guys are sharing together. It's, it's I hope, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm making you salivate, but I, I can't really describe it in, other, in, a, in, a, in a way that it does it justice. I really, just, you gotta taste it. You gotta taste it. And then the last thing I'm gonna say, playing this game because you are pushing yourself and you're so committed to improving your social skills you're improving your like you know you you might have a vision for yourself right now but maybe as you could play it for a little while you even get a larger vision for like the, the world at large right like you want to make other people's lives better by bringing that little bit of color and sprinkling it into their lives and showing them that this like this glue or I don't I don't know if glue is the best analogy but this this like ice you know that's between us when we're walking past each other and Walmart and the airport and on buses and and I don't I don't know like on the street and stuff like that it, it's it's imaginary it's imaginary people generally I've so many more experiences than I have the opposite the exception are just friendly they're so easy to talk to when you just allow it to be not a big deal and that I think you know when you start to play the game a little bit more you're gonna realize that and because you're so committed to that vision you're gonna naturally attract the same level of high level you know very like passionate and 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 you know just like on their shit like on top of their shit people into your life and not only that if you remain committed and you remain in love with the game and with you know this whole journey that you're on you're gonna be able to retain them as well and they're not only gonna just be like there you know it's not gonna be like this like it because loyalty is one thing but I've seen loyalty right and I've, I've seen loyalty in, in members of my family before and it's like unfortunately sort of the norm at least in my family now well, it's really just one couple that I'm thinking of and that's but anyway, this, the loyalty that I'm thinking of right now, it, it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily a healthy loyalty. And what I mean by that is that, like, they're together, but they sort of ended up together, right? And they don't, they don't, like, they don't have any other options. And so they don't have any, like, lasting respect or love for each other. I, and I'm not even going to call it a spark because I do think that even like the spark of an initial relationship, that fades away. But there is something deeper that bonds the two together and what I think that, what I think needs to happen in order to do that is that both partners have to have chosen the other out of abundance. They both had choice and they chose the other one. And it just feels so good, right, to be the one that was chosen. I chose you and you chose me. I didn't end up with you and you didn't end up with me. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm going on a little bit too high of a rant. You attract and you retain those high level people and they are appreciative of your presence in their lives and they're careful not to fuck it up because they know that you're high level, you know, and you're the same with them. And so, yeah, I, that's, that's pretty much the point. Let's wrap up now. I'm going to give you a summary and then we'll sign out, guys. Let's do it. All right, gentlemen, to recap, this game is win win and only win win of course we know that other guys taint it and they play it in a different way but that is not who you and i are my friend and so that's not how we're going to play no matter what your beliefs are or your position is or your goals are play the game in your own way make it your game and i promise you you're going to grow massively as a result so thank you guys and i will see you next week <laughs>